Hello everyone. Today we are going to learn about algorithms and flowcharts and what are the uses of algorithms and flowchart when you are writing a programming language or when you are trying to solve a particular problem. Right. So first of all, what is an algorithm? You had already seen the basics of this uh, algorithm and flowchart. I mean, simple steps. That is, uh, uh, what is an algorithm? It is simply a step-by-step -step procedure to solve any problem right so algorithms and flowcharts are required for every programming language uh, it helps to solve complex problems as it breaks down into simpler steps that is when you're taking a big problem you'll divide that into smaller smaller steps and then it will become easy to write the code and um, debugging also becomes easy so debugging is nothing but finding out errors also becomes very easy and uh, implementation of the problem also becomes very easy. When you'll debug easily, obviously you can uh, implement a program very easily, right? So first, what is an algorithm? We'll see. An algorithm is a step-by-step -step procedure to solve certain problem, okay? Um, it acts like a blueprint implementation of the code. So when you're trying to write a code, first you'll write an algorithm. What are the steps? What are its requirements? What way you, you wanted to... Uh, repeat some set of statements when you wanted to close that particular uh, repetition. So all those things you will be writing in your algorithm. That is the reason you will tell as uh, it is a blueprint implementation of the code, right? And next comes, it makes the problem easy to understand because you are dividing that into small, small parts. It is easy to understand and uh, it should have a finite number of steps. So when you are writing... Uh, any algorithm it should have some finite set of uh, steps not infinite and generally it can be saved in the documentation section right so consider this example finding the roots of quadratic equation so quadratic equation is of form ax square plus bx plus c and uh, as you know there will be only two roots for the quadratic equation and for this we need three values that is a comma b comma c and as an output you will have two roots that is root 1 and root 2. So consider the example x square plus 5x plus c. So for this example, you just try to solve the roots. So when you are trying to do the, I mean, when you are trying to find out the roots, so this was the formula minus b plus or minus square root of b square minus 4ac by 2a. So this was the formula uh, for finding out the roots. And also you are having different conditions when you are writing these uh, roots, right? So consider the algorithm. So these are the algorithmic steps when you are trying to do a quadratic equation problem or the program, right? So the first step, it should always start with this start and it should always end with this stop. And in the middle of this start and stop, you will write all the logic, whatever the relations and whatever the initializations are there, all those you will write. So yes, the basic step start, we had written as a first step. And then I said, how many values did I set? You need three values, A, B, C. So I was uh, reading um, A, B, C value from the user and compute D is equals to uh, B square minus 4AC, right? So what is that uh, D is equals to B square minus 4AC? B square minus 4AC is nothing but your determinant value, which is common for both the roots. That is uh, a reason we had uh, fi first finding out B square minus 4AC. If suppose when you are trying to calculate that D uh, value, if D value is greater than 0, then you will find out the root 1 and root 2. So for that, the formula is mi minus B plus square root of D by 2A. And uh, if for the second root, minus B square root of D by 2A. So here plus minus. So I have split it into root 1 and root 2. Right, and this SQRT is nothing but a predefined function. So the logic of finding out square root is already available in our uh, header files. That is math dot h header file. So those that one simply you'll just call and you'll pass this d value for that. Then you'll get the square root of that one. If uh, so, these R one and R two will be performed if only d value is greater than zero. Otherwise, if d value is equals to zero then simply you had a direct formula for both roots R1 and R2 because if the determinant value is equals to 0, then you will tell that both roots are equal. So R1 and R2 is equals to formula is minus B by 2A. 
clear and you will just uh, simply print r1 and r2 otherwise so the other condition is if d value is less than 0 then print roots as imaginary so three conditions when you are trying to solve a quadratic equation that is when if d is greater than 0 if d is equals to 0 and if d is less than 0 so these three conditions you need to implement even in your program so this is one of the example uh, algorithm for quadratic equation and next coming to your flow chart flow chart can also be defined as a diagrammatic representation of an algorithm or a step by step approach to solve a task and flow chart is at or flow chart is a type of diagram that represents a workflow or a process in a simple way also you can tell flow chart is a pictorial representation of an algorithm right so in this flow chart you will use different different boxes different different shapes and a simple arrow for connecting between uh, those different different shapes or the boxes this diagrammatic representation illustrate a solution model to given problem and these flowcharts are also used for analyzing designing documenting or managing a process or a program in various fields right so what are the different shapes or boxes that we are using in the flowchart as first one is oval or you can also take the rounded um, uh, rectangle right so this is the start or stop symbol indicates the beginning and ending of a program or a sub process they usually contain the word start or end in the algorithm we had start and stop first step is always start and last step is always uh, end uh, sorry first step is always start and uh, ending step is stop so here we are using start or end right and then arrows what did i said it is a process of operation from which box to which box you are moving so that one is done with your arrow a line coming from one symbol and pointing at the another one right and then next rectangle uh, so this is uh, for processing represents a set of operation that change value form or location of data and coming to your parallelogram input or output indicates the process of inputting and outputting data as in entering data or displaying the results so if you are taking reading the values you can use parallelogram and if you are trying to print some values that also you will be using with the parallelogram and coming to your uh, rhombus this is nothing but your decision uh, box or decision symbol you will tell so when you will write something into that, you are going to give the condition. If condition is true, what you will do? If the condition is false, then what you will do? So that is done with your decision box. And then next is circle on page connector. So pairs of labeled connectors replace long and confusing li uh, lines on a flow chart page represented by small circle with a letter inside. That is, if suppose my page is done, my but my uh, flow chart is not completed then at the end i'll keep this circle and i'll give some value into that like some variable and in the next page i'll use this off page connector with the same variable a labeled connector for use when the target is on the another page so it is like a continued button what you will write on the page right so page turn or uh, at the bottom you'll write c-o-n-t-d continuation right so in the similar fashion for a flow chart you will use a circle and off page connector so let us consider that an example for prime number right so this is uh, an algorithm i had also given a flow chart for the same algorithm so first we'll see an algorithm for prime or not and then we'll move on with your flow chart so prime number is uh, divisible by itself or only one right so a number divisible by itself and only then it is known as prime number okay fine so the examples of the prime numbers are 2 3 5 7 11 13 17 19 and so on right so these are the examples between from uh, 1 to 20 uh, so if you just closely observe each and every number is divisible by itself and only by one right so for this first we'll start with the algorithm start and then declaration of two variables i and n and i was initializing c value to zero and from user i was reading the n value if my n value is three right so for i is equals to one so here i declared and here i was assigning i is equals to one and one less than or equals to n n value i had given as three so condition is true then what will come you will enter into this for loop 
uh, so generally these four statements are used for repetition of n number of times any if suppose you wanted to tell hello for 100 times so simply you can write a printf statement in that for loop and you need to provide some condition over there so it itself repeat that uh, that particular printing hello 100 times right so these are nothing but your looping statements you will tell so for timing you just uh, remember it as a looping statement then later we will see what are those looping statements how, and different different types of looping statements are also there so all those we'll see right uh, if suppose yeah if n modulus of i so my n value is 3 3 modulus of i i value is 1 it is equals to 0 3 modulus of 1 yes reminder is 0 so then i was incrementing this temporary variable c so i had initialized here c value to 0 but now what i was doing i was incrementing the c value to plus plus means you are incrementing c by plus 1 right and uh, and then you will increment the uh, i value also so now my i value will become 2 2 less than or equals to 3 yes condition is true again you will come here 3 modulus of i so i value now it is 2 so 3 modulus of 2 is reminder 1 you will get so you are not going to do any increment for this because the condition has failed here so you simply you'll just come out of this if loop and you will increment the i value so now my i value will become again 3 Again, you'll come back here and you'll check the condition 3 less than or equals to n. Yes, 3 is less than or equals to 3 condition true. So again, you'll come back here to if loop and you'll tell 3 modulus of 3. Obviously, you'll get 0. So as a result, I was incrementing my C value. Now again, what will I do? I'll increment my I value. So now my I value will become 4. From 3, it is now 4. 4 less than or equals to 3 no condition is false so you'll just come out of this fifth point and you'll move on to the sixth step so in sixth step what simply uh, i was doing is simply i was checking if suppose c is equals to 2 print given number is prime or else i need to print it is not a prime and simply you are just stopping the algorithmic process you may get a condition uh, sorry a question that why does C, we are taking c is equals to 2 only so what is our condition it should be divisible by itself and uh, 1 so how many times that particular number is divisible by only two times so that is the reason we took count value or some temporary variable is equals to 2 right so for the same prime number or not we are also coming on with the flow chart so same start so this is your start symbol and stop symbol and these are your decision symbols these are for printing these are for declaring so different almost all symbols we had used here right so then next step as usual you are trying to declare the variables or initialize some values and then you are reading the n value so shall we take that four uh four we'll take and as i should get it is not a prime number and the same then same three also we'll check out how the loop is going on and yes you can closely observe here arrow marks are there so these are nothing but your connectivities uh, from which step to which step you are moving depending on the conditions right so after reading n value then what you are doing you are checking the condition as usual i was taking my i value is equals to one right so one less than or equals to four yes condition is true so when it is true you will be moving to this step and uh, four modulus sorry uh, four modulus of one yes condition is true because four is divisible by zero yeah now again it was becoming true so i was incrementing my i value so now my c value will become from zero it will become one and also i was incrementing my i value so now my i value will become two and coming back here two less than or equals to four yes condition is true again you will come and you will check here four modulus of two yes it is divisible by two so you will get the remainder as zero so again this part you will move to c plus uh, plus so now previously my c value is one so now it will become two and again you will increment the i value from here again you will come back here right so now my i value is three three less than or n less than or equals to n yes condition is true and uh, and three mod uh, sorry four modulus of three is equals to zero no because we'll get reminder one so it is becoming false and so we will be moving from here to here and you will increment the i value now your i value will become four four less than or equals to four yes condition is obviously true then four divided by divide four you will get the reminder as zero so again what will happen you will come and you will increment the c value so previously it was divided by one 
it was divided by 2. Now it is divisible by itself. So now my C value will is 3. Right? Again, you will increment the value. So I value will become 5. Right? So 5 less than or equals to 4. Condition is false. So from this way, you will come till here and you will check the condition if C is equals to 2. What is my C value? I got 3. Is that equals to 2? No. So you are coming towards false and you are telling that it is not a prime number. Okay. And the same if you will go with uh, n is equals to 3, then what will happen? And i is equals to 1. 1 less than or equals to 3. Condition true. You are coming here. You are checking out one, uh, 3 less 3 modulus of 1. Yes, you will get 0. So then you will get it as true and you will increment the C value to 1. And you will also increment i value. So now your i value will become 2. You will come back here. You will check the condition 2 less than or equals to 3. Yes, condition is true. So uh, 3 modulus of 2. You will get a reminder 1. So this condition is false. So you will come here. You will increment the i value. Now i value will become 3. So again you will come back here. You will check the condition 3 less than or equals to 3. Yes, condition is true. Now 3 modulus of 3 obviously will get the reminder as 0. So the condition is true here. So we are coming back to and we are incrementing the c value. So now my c value will become 2. And then you will be incrementing i value. So now my i value will become 4. 4 less than or equals to 3. Condition is false. So now you are more not coming to this part. Instead you are going towards a false side. Right. So at false what did I do? I have kept another decision symbol. That is I wanted to check whether c is equals to 2 or not. Yes. I got c value as 2. Then what it will happen? It will move this towards uh, sorry true part. And it will print that the given number is prime number and then finally you'll stop the process so this is what is an uh, flow chart for prime number or not so in this way you can divide in how much ever the big problem is you can divide that into small small pieces and then you can try to implement that right and always you remember that these arrows has to be in the directed one right not a, a plain one because if you keep the plain uh, arrows you couldn't you cannot understand where you are forming the cycles and from where you are quitting so always it should be a directed lines or directed arrows okay uh, this is what a flowchart and algorithm is okay i hope everyone ha uh, got a clear idea what is an algorithm and flowchart and also we had discussed two examples uh, for quadratic equation and the other one is the prime so this is how you need to follow steps when you are designing an algorithm or flowchart. Okay, that's all for today's session. Thank you.